Hello and welcome again to Your Faith Questions. This is our 12th episode. Yes, we are almost doing a season now. A season usually have a, has about 13 episodes and we are on the 12th episode and we want to thank God for this far that we have come. If you are joining us for the first time, Your Faith Questions is just a segment where we get to discuss some of those faith questions that you may be having in an aim to enrich your faith. And so we are glad that quite a number have been journeying with us and we invite you, if you're joining us for the first time, to just go back and see some of the previous episodes that we have tackled. And today we are looking at an interesting subject. Interesting because it is a subject that many of us know that we ought to engage in, but perhaps quite a number of us struggle in. Today we are talking on the whole question of prayer. Yes, you heard me right. We are talking about prayer. So let's just delve in as I am joined by our senior pastor, Reverend Kalisto Odede. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Pastor Mokaya. Yes, 12 episodes 12, down. We've uh, done quite a bit. Eh? Yes, we thank God. Yes. We thank God. Yeah. I read a quote this morning that says, um, the work of the tailor is to make clothes. The work of the shoemaker is to make shoe shoes. And the business of the Christian is to pray. Yes. I don't know whether there is any legitimacy to a quote like that. Just before I respond uh, to that question, I just want to appreciate our viewers, especially the many who have commented and uh, forwarded some of our uh, uh, sessions to other people and even raised questions, uh, and we, we are very grateful. Let's continue together. Uh, the statement you've made is, uh, uh, I think, a significant statement, and one would say uh, there is some legitimacy, uh, legitimacy to it. Yeah. Uh, I'm reminded of a verse in uh, the book of uh, uh, Acts chapter 6. And in Acts chapter 6, the disciples uh, discovered that uh, the Hellenistic uh, uh, widows were being ignored when it came to the distribution of, uh, of food. And uh, so they chose uh, for themselves uh, seven men from uh, uh, among the disciples who would take care of this responsibility of serving tables. But the disciples themselves said, but we will give ourselves uh, to uh, the work of prayer and uh, 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 and the, the ministry of the word. Yeah. Which means prayer is something that people ought to give themselves to. Mm. It is uh, 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 not just a calling for the special people, mm. but the mandate of the Christian. It mm. is the breath of the Christian. Mm. To speak of a Christian who is not praying uh, is almost to speak of a, a, a dead Christian. Mm. Because uh, 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 in terms of our spiritual life, uh, some of the things that keeps us breathing and alive and active, uh, 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 one of them is the word, the other one is prayer. Mm. Uh, so if it is not active and vibrant in our lives, then it means our Christian lives become very, very weak. Mm. Yes. All right. And, and, and I guess even as you're speaking, we are working with the assumption that perhaps those that are watching us, we have an assumption of, of what prayer really is. But if you were to attempt a definition of yes. prayer, yes. how would you define prayer? Uh, I, I think sometimes we become very complex and I get involved in uh, and have gotten involved in quite a number of uh, uh, prayer initiatives mm. right across the world uh, and uh, some of them I'm only aware of but not participating actively and sometimes they make prayer become uh, almost scientific mm. uh, you, you you need to be able uh, to know when the star turns this <laughs> month uh, or when the month is rising that is when you can engage in certain kinds mm. of prayer mm. but prayer simply is a uh, uh, an expression of intimacy mm. between uh, the Christian and uh, uh, their father, uh, who is our God. Mm. And that expression is both an attitude, uh, the attitude that I have towards yeah. God, yeah. and also an expression mm. uh, through words. Uh, it may be vocal, it may be silent, mm. internal or yeah. out, uh, uh, yeah. outside, but that attitude that I have of reverence towards God and then being able to express a kind of a relationship uh, uh, of intimacy with my father. Mm. Uh, mm. That basically is prayer. It may have other outside matters that we would add on it, mm. but I think uh, uh, at the basic level, 
prayer is uh, an intimacy with is yeah. intimacy with God. Yeah. It's a relationship that yeah. is expressed both through my attitude towards mm. God mm. and through my words uh, to God yeah. uh, uh, as yeah. I relate with Him. Yeah. One of the things that you have mentioned that I would like you to perhaps expound is um, this can be expressed either in words, either internally or externally. And so the old age question comes here. To pray loudly or to pray contemplatively? <laughs> Which one is the correct <laughs> mode of prayer according to scripture? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think uh, the Bible uh, expresses uh, both. Uh, we have uh, an example of Hannah yes. uh, going before the temple. Uh, and uh, uh, Samuel, who then was the priest, uh, saw her and her lips were moving, mm. uh, but no words were coming out. Mm. And so Samuel thought she was drunk. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's a kind of a silent prayer. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and, and silent prayers are uh, also very, very effective. Sometimes they may even come out in terms of thoughts, mm. not expressed in words. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and it depends on, on, on time. Nehemiah before the king. Mm. Uh, and, uh, the king asked him, what would you want me to do? And then the Bible says, then I prayed to my God. Yeah. I don't think Nehemiah went down on his knees and said, Lord, now uh, uh, what shall I do about this situation? Yeah. I think he expressed that kind of prayer internally. So we do see that a lot in scripture where people express uh, uh, prayers internally. Mm, mm. But we also see, on the other hand, where people actually vocalize uh, their prayers. Yeah. So the question is not uh, 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 which is uh, uh, the real one or yes. which is more important. Yes. I think it depends one on context mm. and uh, it depends. some context may not allow you to pray loudly. Yeah. Uh, uh, some context would allow you to pray audibly. Yeah. Uh, and then it also uh, uh, depends on, on my feelings at that time. Yeah. Uh, that there are some moments when mm. I just want to be quiet and reflective mm. before the Lord mm. and engage with him in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. But there are some moments when uh, that can't work for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, what I need is go down on my knees or flat on my stomach yeah. uh, and, uh, and vocalize it and mm. uh, uh, say, oh God, oh God, and, and just yeah. say it out aloud. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think that is the idea that uh, we do not dismiss one or the other. Yes. It depends on the context. Uh, it depends on my uh, 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 attitude at that time and my feeling at that time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things you've mentioned is... Uh, you know, there are moments or there's a context in which you would go on your knees or lie flat on your stomach, which brings about the question of context, um, posture rather. Yeah. Um, it is C.S. Lewis who says in his book, The Screwtape Letters, that um, it would be stupid for us to assume that posture does not matter when it comes to prayer yeah. because there's a posture for sleeping, there's a posture <laughs> for working. So does posture matter? And if it does, then what is the posture of prayer? I, th I think when we look at scripture, we find all kinds of postures that people have adopted uh, during prayer. We find people who have been flat on the ground. We find people who have been on their knees. We find people who have been standing. But I think the important thing is that that pos posture should reflect what I said about prayer, yes. attitude. Yes. Because there is some uh, posture that is actually arrogant, that mm. there's some posture that is uh, uh, disrespectful yeah. uh, and, and you, you see one and the way you are praying uh, is, is actually disrespectful. Mm. Even anyone mm. looking at you would say this can't be an attitude of prayer. Yeah. So whatever posture we would adopt, uh, I think it is very, very important that it be a posture of respect. Yeah. Uh, uh, going down on our knees is a, a great posture. Uh, and uh, occasionally, if the uh, uh, atmosphere is conducive, uh, even going flat on the mm. stomach, uh, sitting down quietly is a great posture. Uh, standing up and raising your hands is a great posture. We find uh, uh, Elisha, for example, praying uh, over uh, the uh, boy that had died. Yeah. And Elisha is doing prayer walks. Mm. He's actually walking to and fro. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's a posture that one can adopt prayer walks. Sometimes yeah. you walk to and fro yeah. uh, in terms of your prayers. The attitude is a posture of respect before God. Mm. Yes. Mm. yes. Great. And, and I'm wondering, um, we, we live in a busy time. Now they, there are always things to do. Um, and, and it's not the time that we have doesn't seem to be enough. Why should one carve out time to pray? Why is prayer important? I, I think at the base of this is uh, what will I live on to keep me going uh, as a Christian? Mm. 
uh, can I outsource prayers so that either the pastor or uh, my other relatives, my wife, my uh, children would pray for me or uh, my parents would pray for me. Uh, can I outsource prayers? Yes, others can pray for us in terms of intercession, mm. but we can never outsource prayers as, uh, as believers. Uh, yeah. we, we have to do it ourselves, and if we do not do it, uh, our spiritual growth will stagnate mm. uh, because it's actually contributory to our spiritual growth. But then secondly, apart from that, uh, uh, the, the Lord actually uh, uh, speaks in Scripture, and uh, when he speaks in Scripture, he says, uh, and when you pray, get into your inner room. It's not if you pray. Mm. It is when you pray, which yeah. means prayer is actually expected yeah. of, of a believer that you will pray. Mm. Uh, we do have lots of passages of scripture that are encouraging us to pray. Luke again, uh, 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 chapter 18, the Lord speaks about the importune uh, uh, lady. He told them parables uh, that showed they should always pray. pray. Uh, yeah. So we are supposed to be always prayer. Uh, Paul writing uh, to the Thessalonians says, pray always uh, or constantly, mm. uh, which means the believer is meant to pray constantly. But I think uh, uh, perhaps one needs to point out that uh, uh, this importance is also related to the fact that uh, prayer is one of the key ways in which the Almighty God partners with human beings in order to uh, uh, implement his will mm. here on earth. Mm. That when we begin to pray, that we are actually linking up with God and uh, unleashing or releasing mm. his power uh, to affect his will somewhere. And that's yeah. why Jesus said, uh, pray this way, uh, uh, our Father who is in heaven, uh, hallowed be your name. Your will be done on earth. As we pray, we are actually enforcing the will on God on earth mm. because we are linking with him and allowing his power yeah. to be expressed in those circumstances, uh, in that home, in the life of that individual, in that congregation, in that situation. So prayer yeah. is very important uh, because it actually allows us uh, mm. to enforce the will of God mm. here uh, on earth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and is there, is there a, a time limit, uh, for example, that you know, I would know I have prayed. <laughs> is it one hour, two hours, or is it okay if I just pray for 30 seconds? Now, uh, we, we, we see all kinds of prayers mm. again in scripture. Mm. Uh, the short prayers is the kind that uh, uh, people use the phrase ejaculatory prayers, mm. which you just project immediately and say, uh, Lord, have mercy on me. Mm. And for example, you're facing an accident driving yeah. and, you, so, yeah. and you say, oh Lord, help. Mm. Now, now uh, uh, that's a prayer, yeah. but it is a very short prayer. Mm. Uh, mm. Then uh, uh, there are prayers that uh, you pray as a result of a burden that God has laid on your heart. Some of that kind of prayer may not be a one-day prayer. Mm. It may be a prayer for even three months yeah. when you actually continuously bring this before mm. the Lord and mm. you groan over it and agonize over mm. that situation. Mm. Uh, it's not a short prayer. It's a yeah. very prolonged several days. Then there yeah. are others that you feel this one to pray alone is not enough. Mm. I'm going to take two, three days yeah. and fast, pray yeah. and fast over it. Yeah. Uh, because when I pray and fast over it, uh, I do believe God is actually going to give mm. me a breakthrough. Mm. Uh, then uh, uh, in that moment on, say, my daily time with the Lord, there may be a, 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 a time when I read the word, then a time when I express myself to God in prayer. And that may be short mm. because uh, uh, you are going to work and uh, and uh, uh, you have matters, so you may do uh, uh, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, uh, but then there are others also who set apart uh, such a time and uh, one hour uh, continuously or even uh, two hours. Uh, I'm aware of uh, certain individuals uh, who would actually lock themselves in a room and uh, uh, they would spend uh, uh, something like three days uh, yeah. uh, just before the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Uh, so I think it just depends on... Mm. Uh, 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 what is the context, what is the burden, what is the circumstance. Mm. But the great thing is uh, that we develop a habit of prayer. Mm. Uh, however short mm. it is, uh, yeah. it needs to be a habit that yeah. we have actually cultivated, that we become prayerful people. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the question is not um, on time. The, the, I guess what you're saying is just pray. Yes, uh, take time to pray. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now... Um, we've talked about the importance of prayer, and 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 uh, you, you've talked about all these uh, amazing things that prayer does. But also, as believers, I do not know of a believer who doesn't wish their prayer life 
could be better. Um, maybe, I, I don't know, do you, do you, have you arrived in your prayer <laughs> no, life? No, <laughs> I haven't. Uh, to be honest, I haven't. <laughs> then the question is, why do we struggle in prayer? Uh, I, I think it's important, uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, I just want to read this scripture because this scripture has helped me a lot mm. uh, from the book of Romans chapter 8 and uh, uh, verses uh, 26 and 27. Uh, Roman, uh, chap Romans chapter 8, 26 and 27 says this. Uh, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep uh, for words. And he, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints uh, according to the will of God. Now, that passage of scripture says, we don't know how to pray. Mm. Uh, can prayer be taught or can it be caught? I think the truth of the matter is both. That one can be taught how to pray by being uh, uh, told the principles mm. that helps in prayer. Yeah. But in essence, uh, prayer is actually caught. Mm. That uh, we grow in our prayer life. Yeah. Uh, uh, one doesn't just arrive. Mm. Uh, one grows. And by growing, it simply means you start slowly by slowly. And, uh, and, and as days go by, you begin to develop. And you get also in depth of quality in mm. terms of your prayer with the Lord as mm. you grow in this dimension. You, you, you actually develop and grow. So all of us are weak. And because we are weak, we don't know how to pray. So if you are there and you are saying, I really don't know how to pray, I think you are the right candidate mm. for prayer. Mm. Because the Bible says, uh, then the Holy Spirit comes uh, and begins to help us in our weaknesses yeah. uh, and helps us to pray even in, when we do not know how to pray. So mm. all of us will struggle with that. All of us have to begin scheduling. Mm. Uh, in the midst of my busy days, uh, what is the most convenient time for me? Mm. There are some people who are mourning people. Uh, I, uh, they wake up at uh, uh, 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or whatever, and they're able to do their prayers in the morning. There are some of us who are more of night people, mm. and uh, uh, we, we do our prayers best uh, uh, at night when mm. we are alone, everyone mm. has gone to mm. bed, and you just have this time yeah. yourself. So identify what the best time for you. There are others who feel lunch hour when uh, uh, we've closed office, no one is coming to my office, I can lock my office doors and spend some 30 minutes or more yeah. uh, with the Lord. Yeah. Uh, the important thing is to be able to create uh, mm. uh, some opportunity is, uh, mm. when actually you can engage with God through prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, part of the struggles that some people have had, um, I don't know whether you have ever encountered someone that said, I used to be a Christian, but now I'm an atheist. And you prod further and ask why. And they said, there was this situation in my life. I prayed to the Lord and he did not answer me. Mm. And I guess the reason why that becomes challenging, if you look at the book of Mark 11, Chapter 20, uh, ch verse 24, Mark 11, 24, the Bible says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Mm. This is Jesus speaking. Mm. He says, whatever you ask, believe you have received it, and it will be yours. And the question is, I don't think we always receive answers to our prayers. Mm. Why is that? And yet Jesus said, Whatever you ask, mm. believe you have received it, mm. and it will be yours. Uh, oh, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> but I think perhaps we need to respond to it by uh, my emphasis on prayer is prayer as a relationship. Mm. Uh, I try to emphasize that a lot more than uh, turning God into a vending machine mm. uh, where we press the button yeah. and out comes uh, uh, whatever we want. Mm. But having said that, uh, I think it's also appropriate for us to uh, accept the truth of the matter that mm. there are a number of people who have actually been hurt mm. because they have felt that God has let them down. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they had this issue that they were concerned about, a relative who was unwell. Mm. They were hoping by all means that relative would recover yeah. and be healed. Instead, that relative actually passed on. Mm. And as a result of that, they have been devastated yeah. uh, uh, and have wondered whether they can still trust God or whether God is still real. Now, I think the important thing for us when we are praying is that uh, uh, answers to prayers uh, have to be aligned with the will of God. Mm. Uh, wh what is the will of God 
when I'm praying over this. Mm. There are some that he may have revealed his will very, very clearly, like when I'm praying for the salvation of a loved one, yeah. he may have revealed his will. His will is that all may be saved and yeah. come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. But it's taking long. It's mm. taking very long before mm. this person mm. uh, comes to know the Lord. Mm. Should I give up, therefore, that the Lord actually is not answering prayers? Mm. Uh, mm. No, because when it comes to prayer, one, there is the will of God. Two, there is how does God usually respond to prayer? Yeah. It's important, again, for us to note that uh, sometimes uh, what we are praying for, we are not ready for. Mm. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. amiss. Mm. We, we are not ready for God to bring whatever we are asking for at this particular time uh, because uh, it, it's, not, uh, it's not in his will for us. And uh, sometimes if we were uh, promoted to that level where we are praying we should be promoted, mm. maybe uh, uh, we'd actually face temptations mm. that would destroy our faith. So mm. because it is not in our will, in his will for us, uh, the, the answers are not coming immediately. Yeah. Now, some of the uh, answers God would give is, uh, uh, I'm going to do this, but the timing element. Mm. Uh, I, I, I'm not really going to do it now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do it uh, later. Mm. Uh, and, and we see that also in scripture where mm. God has delayed even mm. things that he has promised people. Abraham yeah. Yeah. waited for very many years before uh, uh, Isaac came on the scene. Yeah. So I think we need to take note of that, that sometimes there are delays mm. uh, when it comes uh, uh, to uh, 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 prayers. And sometimes God answers them in a different way from the way we had expected. Mm. And we miss to see that actually God has answered them until much, much later. Yeah. When we begin to reflect in retrospective, mm. then we start mm. seeing that actually God had answered yeah. this prayer that we had raised to him. Yeah. And so uh, uh, anyone who would be feeling a little discouraged, ours is to encourage that individual that uh, Trust in the Lord. Mm. Continue holding on. Mm. Don't give up. Yeah. Even if you do feel like uh, 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 you want to give up, don't give up. Mm. Jesus gave the example of the widow, uh, the importunate widow, mm. who actually came to him and, and, and uh, uh, who went to a judge mm. and said, vindicate me against my enemy. Yeah. But the judge kept on turning. But because the widow uh, kept on coming uh, mm. uh, 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 back again and again and say, mm. vindicate me, vindicate mm. me, vindicate mm. me. The Lord says, uh, similarly, you also, yeah. when you pray, keep coming, mm. uh, keep coming. It's not mm. that he's withholding his yeah. answers from us uh, yeah. or he's a, t a stingy God. Mm. Uh, keep coming and keep asking uh, mm. in prayer. Yeah. The Lord answers prayers. Yeah. yeah. But I think a struggle that one would have, yeah, and one of the things that you've mentioned is our our prayers ought always to be aligned to the will of God. I, I'm imagining someone that was praying for a loved one that was sick and they did not get well. And we are talking about perhaps it was the will of God, you know, not to heal. But even more, I'm imagining um, a, a married, you know, a lady or a man that was praying for their marriage not to disintegrate, but still the spouse chose to go a different direction. How does an individual like this reconcile the will of God mm. and they have been laboring in prayer? I think for the two cases, perhaps it's also important for us to respond uh, as a pastor who prays for people to be healed. Mm. Uh, there are some people that I've seen healed. There are some people that are prayed for to be healed. Yeah. Uh, instead, they have actually died. Mm. Uh, how do I reconcile that with my prayers? I have come to the conclusion that uh, 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 there are sicknesses mm. that the Bible refers to as uh, the sickness which is unto death. Mm. I do not know which sickness is unto death. Yeah. Therefore, when I pray for someone, yeah. I pray that God would heal them. Mm. But there are mm. sicknesses that God would use in order to translate the individual mm. from this world to the other. Mm. So that's important for me to note. Secondly, it is very important for me to note that even when they do receive physical healing, it is actually temporal. Yeah. Uh, it is not a permanent healing. Mm. And uh, the fact that we don't have uh, Lazarus with us here, who was actually raised up from the dead, mm. is simply because he died at some point again. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, he may have died of illnesses and sickness mm. again, mm. Uh, although he had been raised up uh, uh, from the dead. So that healing that he received yeah. was actually temporal. It yeah. was not permanent. Yeah. Uh, he will eventually die. So even those who have received healing, we do know yeah. that eventually 
they, they will actually die. They yeah. will come a sickness mm. which is unto death. And I think this needs to encourage us uh, uh, by viewing death with a different perspective. Mm. I've uh, tried to tell uh, families who have lost uh, loved ones uh, that sometimes death is the permanent healing. Mm. Because the Bible says uh, on the other side there will be no sickness, yeah. there will be no illnesses, they will yeah. actually be complete. Yeah. So uh, death becomes then uh, another kind of healing mm. uh, that is actually a permanent healing. Yeah. For us who are left behind, the vacuum is there, the emptiness is there, mm. and we have to deal with the sorrow mm. of missing the loved ones. Yeah. But in, a fa in as far as the loved one is concerned, mm. they will never be sick again. Yeah. It is permanent and total healing. Yeah. Now, for those who are praying in a situation where human will is struggling, and sometimes human sin, it's, it's very difficult uh, when we are dealing with human sin. Uh, mm. Lots of conflicts within marriages uh, mm. are actually because of human sin. Mm. Uh, uh, either someone is too proud to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, arrogance is there in their mm. ministers, so they can't uh, break uh, mm. when they need to break. Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes uh, uh, they have done other things that have offended mm. the other. Mm. So I think it is important in that context, therefore, uh, for us to uh, say yes, uh, we are praying, but we are aware that mm. human sin is involved here. Mm. Let's pray for God to break uh, the yeah. human sin, yeah. to break the heart, uh, and yeah. bring it about. Mm. Now, if someone does not turn, the partner who has been praying mm. should not feel guilty mm. that I may have contributed to the direction my marriage has yeah. gone, unless yeah. they did, and they are aware of what they did. Yeah. But if they did not, they were holding on to this marriage, mm. loving their partner, mm. and, and praying, and uh, for some reason their partner chose uh, to walk away. Yeah. They should not blame God for that. Mm. They should not even feel that God has let them down. Mm. I think they should continue to faithfully hold on to the Lord, mm. recognizing the fact that there are times when individuals make uh, personal decisions yeah. and decisions that they are accountable and mm. responsible for, mm. that we, as their loved ones, yeah. cannot actually control yeah. those decisions. Yeah. Wow. Um, the scripture talks a, a, a big deal about, about faith. Um, Jesus, um, there's an account in the gospel that says, and he did not do many miracles there uh, because of their lack of faith, or he was amazed at their mm -hmm. lack of faith. Um, Hebrews speaks about that without faith, it is impossible to please God mm -hmm. because everyone that comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What is the relationship between faith and prayer? Mm -hmm. And as you answer that, what is faith in the first place? Thank you. Uh, someone defined faith as uh, uh, the currency uh, that we use to transact business mm. in the kingdom of God. Mm. Because he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Yeah. Now, coming to God requires an assurance that when I pray, God actually is going to hear my prayer mm. and God is going to respond uh, to this prayer. If I do not hold on firmly to that assurance. I will lack the ability to actually pray. Yeah. Now, faith, therefore, is uh, uh, this belief that what I'm hoping for, what I'm trusting God for, will become fulfilled uh, as I pray. It is like having a title deed that shows you you have a piece mm. of land somewhere, mm. although you are not seeing that physical land, yeah. but the title deed is showing you yeah. you have that piece of land. Yeah. So I think it is important that when we come to God, we come with the anticipation that God is a prayer answering God, mm. that when we trust in him mm. and pray believing, then he, he, he will be able to actually respond to our prayers uh, yeah. uh, 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 through the faith that we have committed to him. Mm. Now, uh, I think it is important when we come uh, to God in prayer uh, to come with that attitude of faith. Because if we do not, uh, 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 we are doubtful in our prayers. Uh, the Bible says a doubtful person cannot receive anything yeah. uh, from God, yeah. uh, the book of James. Yeah. We need to come with that assurance uh, that actually God will, will be able to answer our prayers. Mm. All right, all right. And, and, and uh, just because of what you have said, in your own experience, um, have you witnessed or do you think there are people who sort of tend to receive answers, um, mm -hmm. you know, from prayers they have made relatively more than others? And perhaps what is the secret um, that they have? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Yes in that, n n sorry, no in that uh, God treats all his children uh, equally. Yeah. He's a God with whom... There is no favoritism. Mm. He, he, he holds the truth 
and uh, uh, there is no favoritism at all when it comes to the things of God. Mm -hmm. But having said that God treats his, his children equally, just like I mentioned of prayer, that people actually grow in prayer. Yeah. Similarly, people also grow in faith, mm. uh, the ability to trust God. Yeah. And uh, so there are moments and times when uh, uh, actually I, 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 I can only trust God for something little. Yeah. Uh, but as I grow in my faith, mm. I've seen ah, God answered it here. Mm. Uh, then I begin to say he who did it here yes. can actually be able to also do it here. Mm. And as a result of that, uh, I begin to grow in my faith more and more mm. to trust God for greater things. Yeah. Now, there are individuals who have grown in faith uh, to such an extent that the things they can trust God for, whether in terms of finances, whether in terms of the works of God, whether mm. in terms of miracles, uh, mm. amazes some of us because yeah. we begin saying, uh, it seems easy yeah. when he's doing it, it just seems yeah. easy. It's yeah. because uh, uh, he has uh, somehow tested God, uh, if I may use the mm. word tested, mm. uh, and, and, and God has proved himself in a number of ways in his life. Uh, and he has grown to the level where now he knows, uh, actually I can trust God for this. Uh, yeah. And uh, secondly, prayer of that nature also depends a lot uh, in mm. the ability to hear from God. Mm. Because when I pray and I have this uh, uh, inner conviction mm. that God has been speaking to me or yeah. with me yeah. about this situation, yeah. uh, and, and God has been saying, I'll do this. Yeah. Uh, th th then I'm actually coming to God with a different level of faith, mm. uh, such deep assurance that this will happen yeah. uh, because God has been speaking in my heart yeah. uh, about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you've talked about God speaking, and, and I guess that is a subject that um, a lot of us that are believers struggle with. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 says, you know, draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifices of fools. So w what is that relationship between going before God in prayer to talk, 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 and ask, 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 or, you know, mm. and the space for actually hearing mm. and listening mm. to what God is saying, and how are we to go about doing that? It's what we call prayer as dialogue with God. Mm. Uh, most of our prayers are monologue. Mm. We go to God with a shopping list, yeah. which we read and we tell him, God, this is uh, my shopping list. But mm. prayer as dialogue goes to God in anticipation that it's not only me who will speak to God, but God also will speak to my heart. Sometimes he will highlight a scripture mm. that will pop up in my mind mm. uh, or in my reading uh, when I'm responding to him in prayer. And that scripture pens itself in my mind in such a deep way that uh, uh, I, 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 I just know in my heart God is speaking to me. Yeah. God is speaking to me. Yeah. Sometimes uh, he will project thoughts in our hearts as we mm. are praying, mm. uh, and, and this would seep in as, as deep thoughts that uh, 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 becomes impressions in our hearts, mm. uh, and impressions that when we act on them, yeah. we actually see them coming mm. to be, mm. uh, uh, becoming realized. Yeah. Now, that attitude in prayer is so important that prayer becomes dialogue with mm. God mm. Uh, rather than a monologue, yeah. uh, where we are also hearing God God in our hearts, mm. uh, hearing God through scripture yeah. as, as, as we respond to him. Mm. And, uh, uh, and I think a Christian who develops that uh, finds that their prayer uh, time is uh, deeply enriched uh, yeah. as they interact with God. Oh, great. And perhaps my final question is, um, you've probably mentioned some of those, but what would you say are the essential components of prayer? Uh, I, I, uh, we, we have uh, uh, traditionally held this acronym that I think is important uh, uh, for uh, being able to recognize what prayer is. Uh, what's the dimensions of prayer? What's the scope of prayer when I go before the Lord? We've used the acronym ACTS, mm. uh, where ACTS A stands for adoration, yeah. that an, an individual should come before the Lord and have just some time of worshiping God mm. and adoring God, telling mm. God who he is, how great he is. But secondly, uh, uh, we've used uh, uh, the C, yeah. which is confession. A time when I come to the Lord and I know I have not thought right things, I have not said right things, I have not acted the right way. And I ask him, God, please uh, do forgive me. Uh, uh, that's confessing before the Lord. Uh, that we need to have a time of thanksgiving, uh, appreciating the things that God has done for us. Uh, he's preserved our lives, he has mm. kept us, uh, and we just come to him in our prayer that uh, there should be some moments of thanksgiving and gratitude to God for who he is and what he has done to us. Uh, and then there should be moments as is uh, supplication. And supplication is now when we make requests of God, sorry, of God, 
and say, hey, Lord, would you please intervene in this circumstance and in this situation uh, 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 as, as we bring intercession uh, to God? I add one more S. Uh, 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 the one more S that I add is uh, uh, Christians should also engage in a measure of spiritual warfare mm. because prayer is warfare. It's yeah. being opposed by the devil. Yeah. And the only way we can uh, uh, fight against the devil mm. is, is uh, engaging in some measure of spiritual warfare mm. Uh, mm. over circumstances, over situations. Yeah. So a Christian should be open to all these uh, mm. when they are in prayer. Wonderful. And your final thoughts to our viewers? As I've said, uh, prayer is a, a child of God uh, talking with the Father. And our encouragement is uh, we need to develop that habit of prayer. Uh, start slowly. Do not uh, wait uh, until you begin feeling uh, that uh, you have become a great intercessor. Every individual can pray, whether you are gifted in, in intercessions or, or not. Uh, you can take some time uh, uh, quietly to come before the Lord and to ask him uh, to answer prayer and just to engage with him in a relationship. Uh, so uh, wherever you are, uh, try to set a time, uh, part time uh, daily, if possible, when you just come before the Lord in prayer. And may God bless you. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for joining us um, this day as we have been talking about prayer. We continue to encourage you to send whatever questions, either related to this episode today or whatever subject matter that you may need clarification on. And we will attempt to the best of our ability, God granting grace to be able to address that. After um, perhaps the 14th episode, we will see whether we can have a, a live session where you can be sending your questions live um, and we'll be more than glad to respond um, to those ones. But I leave you with the words of James chapter 4, the latter part of, chapter, of verse 2 and chapter 3. And this is what the Bible says. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. May the Lord help us to pray, and may the Lord help us to pray rightly. Until next week, the Lord bless you.